Hey, man. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. So uh, you and I are going to do a little bit of uh, CSS review and design critique. And we are pairing with a tool that I wrote with a couple of people called Tuple. We sure are. And so far, I have to say the experience has been pretty good. Awesome. I'm psyched to hear that. You are actually basically the first non co-founder to use this more or less <laughs> awesome so you are you're pre-alpha you're pre-alpha right now amazing yeah sweet so, so yeah. yeah what i know is that you're working on this site that's going to be like a kind of like a resource for people who want to learn more about pairing get better at pairing uh, become more effective at pairing um, mm -hmm. which seems like a pretty smart thing to do since you're working on a tool to make it easier for people to pair remotely mm -hmm. and uh so why don't we take a look at the the project and kind of get an idea about you know what tools we're using and stuff like that sounds good so this is a jekyll site yeah it is yeah so it's a static site generator written in ruby and uh from what i can see it looks like it's pretty much just vanilla jekyll but we've pulled in uh tailwind css through npm and kind of got a config mm -hmm. file here where maybe you've done some customizing maybe you have not just about none i think okay and uh yeah so we've got that running just using jekyll's kind of serve command here and looking at it locally and mm -hmm. this is what you got so far so um what did you want to to look at first uh do you want to start with the design or the css like what what makes sense to you um i mean maybe what would be good is to look at the design, decide if there's any things that we want to, to do differently, and then we can mm -hmm. jump into the code and make some of those changes and see what that experience is like and maybe notice if there's any code things that could be done in a different, more better way. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. So, um, I mean, I think this looks pretty good, really. Like, um, nice. got a nice little drop shadow here. You know, yeah. everything seems like pretty good. You got this sidebars full height. That's often a problem for people. Um, the first thing oh. that I think um, does stand out to me from a design perspective, uh, we'll have to check, but the the optimal line length for reading, I think is between mm. like 65 and 75 characters-ish. So one thing mm -hmm. I like to do when I'm like working on like uh, written stuff that i'm designing like articles and stuff is just kind of double check that and make sure that i'm not being like complacent with my eyes and just thinking it looks fine i like to try and figure out how how can i math this a little bit more you know what i mean yeah yeah so this is like 102 characters wide which isn't is okay i think but it's probably on the upper limit of what is going to be optimal for reading so i might want to go into like dev tools and just kind of poke around and see if I find like where our main sort of container section is that's dictating this width. If we were to just add a new style here, because we don't want to, in this case, it's probably fine because there's probably nothing else on this page using this class. Um, but since mm -hmm. everything in Tailwind is all these little micro utilities that are reused everywhere, making changes directly to the definition often leads to other weird changes on the page. Um, mm -hmm. So what I might try is just setting it to 50 RAM so we have that same starting point and just kind of tweaking it and seeing like, you know, is there a, a nicer feeling kind of width for reading? Mm -hmm. um, so even something like 42, you get some awkward wrapping, uh, mm. but maybe around like 43, 44, or even, even you could go down like as low as like 38 or something. But if we, mm -hmm. if we did like 40, you get some, the wrapping is a little bit weird, but I don't think you can worry about that too much. That gives us 75, right? So okay. if we're trying to stay within that optimal line length for readability, this is probably actually like the upper limit of, uh, of what we want. Gotcha. So I had this sort of weird feeling as I was playing with the width of this section where it's like, man, the, when I make this small, there's just so much white space on the right, especially on bigger monitors. Yeah. And that to me feels like maybe like a downside of this like left aligned type design where it doesn't just like float in the center nicely. Sure. So that's something we could do as well. So if we wanted to, right, we could have this, um, I mean, maybe something like 
this seems a little bit too big. I'm trying not to get tricked by just like how nicely things wrap here, you know, so you don't have like awkward <laughs> yeah. line lengths. But um, maybe something like like 39 is just kind of an annoying number, but maybe 40 would be kind of good. <laughs> and then you could yep. do something like um, add like the MX Auto class on here. And now depending how things are built, this may not have like the effect that we want, but this will kind <laughs> of just- Things are built poorly. So this will center the content, and then as you resize the browser, mm. it'll kind of stay centered, which you may not want it to be centered on smaller screens, like once that sidebar goes away or something, but we could always mm -hmm. mess with that too. So, um, yeah, I don't know. that. I mean, this is a big screen. This is, and I have the resolution reduced a bit, but mm -hmm. it's still bigger than probably what most people are going to be doing. Uh, like no one on yeah. the iMac is maxing out there browser window um yeah. usually but yeah yeah this I, is kind of cool looking i think yeah i don't hate this a little bit of an improvement um something else yeah. that i think i would probably look at is um usually i try not to use the exact same color for body copy as for headings mm. um because it even though the content is obviously really important it kind of like the headings don't feel like as emphasized as they they should be totally. there's, there's not as much hierarchy kind of in just like the visual look of things um so what i might do is figure out a way to change it that is going to affect everything we want it to affect but not the things we don't want because for example if we just do it to paragraphs it's not going to affect bullets um mm, so yeah i ran into that actually so you've got this like content class which is kind of like the wrapper that kind of says stuff in here was written in markdown and probably won't have a bunch of tailwind styles on it right which is you kind of it. generally um what you are gonna see there so i might do something like we can just test this out this way this wouldn't be how we'd actually implement it in css but we can try like text gray darker darkest and then we'd want to go through and basically give all the headings like the original it's probably text black or something, right? Mm -hmm. It was on there before. Now, did that style not take? I don't think it did. Text. I think the gray one did not. Darker. So that's too light. Darkest. And then if we change like this heading and the one under it, just so we can kind of have a uh, a decent preview here. Then like this text is still mm -hmm. um, dark and pretty clearly dark and not like weirdly light or anything, but mm -hmm. it feels like a little like there's a little bit more hierarchy to the page. Yeah, I dig that. By the way, like, do you often experiment with stuff in the dev tools rather than like actually changing the CSS and whatnot? I do, um, but sometimes it can be problematic because you. You make too many changes and you kind of forget everything that you did, uh, which yeah, yeah, I think totally. we're getting close to that point here. Mm -hmm. um, on a or somewhat of a related note for that, I saw a tool yesterday that, you know who Jared Drysdale is? Mm -hmm. He did that yeah. bootstrapping design book. So he's working on a tool that's designed to let you like tweak styles in the browser. And uh, it sort of captures all the changes that you made and gives you like a diff. So you can go and apply that to the actual code after the fact. It's really interesting. Kind of neat. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. like you give it to your developer and say, here are the diffs. Go exactly. change these things. Yeah. yeah. So you can mix it a little bit easier to contribute on something. Maybe if you don't know the tech stack or something, he gave an example of he's working on a .NET project right now. And he's not a .NET mm -hmm. developer at all. He's a designer. But he still wants to be able to say, here's some of the changes I would make. You go make that in whatever weird Visual Studio file <laughs> it needs to be made. In. <laughs> Probably need um, to change XML. Yeah, exactly. Um, I love tools that just kind of embrace, like <clears throat> embrace how people wish things worked. Mm. Where it's like, I, I wish I could just change this thing in the Dev Tools, and then like someone else would like <laughs> do this for yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Like taking like behaviors that people already have and making them exactly. more useful. Yep. Cool. So I think like that's a little bit better. Um, one other yeah. thing that stands out to me is with these headings, you kind of have like, it's either the same or very similar spacing above and below. Yeah. Um, which can lead to 
it, it makes it a little bit trickier to read in some ways because your brain has to do a hair of work to figure out like is this a heading of a next section or are you just trying yep. to like have some emphasized sentence in the middle of a paragraph because um, mm-hmm. there's not like a clear connection between the heading and the piece that it's actually labeling right so totally. I might take like all the h2s and give them like a margin top of I don't know what's four rem do that's probably I mean it's probably a little bit too much mm. two or three maybe 2.5 mm-hmm. and that way it's a little bit more clear like what they're uh, connected to now we haven't updated this one so this is a little bit light still but I think if we were to take like this page and kind of open it in a new tab so we can kind of do our visual oh, yeah. diff <laughs> uh, we might see like overall oh, there's yeah. like a bit of an improvement it's the fact that everything jumps over kind of makes it hard to a b yeah. as easily but yeah why don't mm-hmm. we jump into the code and maybe make some of those changes so we can get a taste of the implementation as well totally that sounds good also there's some <clears throat> there's some stuff in there where i'm like overriding like doing custom styles that i'm not sure if i did that like the best way so that'd be good okay. to look at too perfect okay so why don't we jump I- in and uh take a look at let me guess where this would be is it just going to be in like this layout file yeah got it so here's that div that we were looking at before that content div so this mm-hmm. is your custom class that defines your sort of typographic styles for kind of user supplied content really mm-hmm. um so if we wanted to center that we could do the mx auto trick and that should get us centered but things are still kind of wider than we wanted right Mm -hmm. so why don't we see what i think we liked 40 as a width yeah so md instead of lg which is nice so we don't even have to make any changes there yeah Um, so like philosophical question there mm -hmm. if there was nothing like 40 that we could pull off like in a pre-made uh utility yeah do you just add new stuff pretty regularly or do you try to fit within the existing things like how how do you weight your decision there it's um i i typically will add what i need but it's rare that i'm usually adding things in between now this one is kind of like a special case because this is actually a module in tailwind that i have an explicit note to myself to revisit Uh, Because Mm -hmm. I don't think these values are actually the most useful values. It's kind of just like this lazy jumps up by 10 every time scale, right? But I Mm. think a more practical scale here would actually be tighter at the bottom and kind of wider as it goes up. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, Because the jump from SM to MD, like proportionate to the size that SM already was, is so large compared to when you get up here where... 2 2xl versus 3xl almost feels like fine tuning whereas here it feels like some crazy huge jump that actually yeah that makes sense and that this sort of touches on a a a thing i kept noticing or noticed a few times was there were a number of times where like text gray dark was too wasn't quite dark enough and text gray darker was like a little bit too dark and i kind of wanted something in between and Mm. i for most for the most part i just said all right i'll just pick one of these even though it's like not exactly what i want yeah but um but I was sort of not sure the best way to proceed if I was like, okay, now I have to have this medium dark gray. Yeah. So I think in a perfect world, um, the the easiest way to end up with like a nice Tailwind sort of config file is if you're implementing like a custom design that's already been designed is to like adapt your Tailwind mm. config file to match what kind of your designer provided you right but right. that's only really one workflow the other workflow which is almost more common i think is where you're trying to design in the browser and you're using tailwind's defaults as like a set of constraints to help you move a little bit faster without having to fine tune everything yourself so in those cases when you run into situations where something doesn't feel quite right to me that's almost like a sign that we should do a better job with what we provide as as defaults Mm. Mm. interesting so the color scale is something that i'd like to revisit um, probably before 1.0 because i i wanted to keep things we had this like internal debate versus on how to name colors right so i liked this kind of uh, like descriptive naming scheme Mm -hmm. um 
where it's really clear like red darkest is obviously going to be the darkest red and lightest is going to be the lightest red but you'll see other color systems that use like a numeric approach that kind of looks like a font mm. weight where people will do yep. like red 100 you know red 200 up to 900 mm. and the thing that kind of put me off of that approach originally was that there's nothing about those numbers that kind of communicates darker or lighter right um you know you could think of it as like this is how much lightness there is so 100 is going to be darker than 900 but if, if you think about it in terms of like boldness, the 900 kind of seems like it should be like the boldest red, which wouldn't necessarily be dark. You know what I mean? Right. It just might mm-hmm. be the brightest. Um, but I think I'm coming around on it, if only because okay. using these names, uh, you're limited in how many you can have. Because otherwise you have to try and start making up words like darkester and darkestest, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we had the same problem with gray where really like black is still a gray, but we kind of used it as a, a hack to add a darker gray than darkest. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think yeah. in a perfect world or in a, you know, if, if I were to revisit this, I think I would change it to use a numeric scale, like gray 10 through gray 90 or something. Hmm. And um, the other nice thing about using the numeric scale is that it's easier to stick stuff in between if you really need to. So right. if all of a sudden this was just like, um, you know, 10, 20, 30, and this would probably be 50. Um, that was a cool little trick you just did, by the way. Yeah. How's that? What How do that? you do that in Vim, bro? <laughs> Macros. <laughs> um, so there's this plugin for Sublime called Text Pastry, which nice. has this like command interface. And if you have multiple cursors enabled and you put in like a number, it's automatically just going to like increment that number for you. But cool. if you put in a number and then a step value, it's going to mm-hmm. increment it by that. And you can start from like 50 and increment by 25 if I wanted to. I like uh, that. Stuff like that. That's cool. Vim does have a thing where it's like there's like a math mode you can drop into mm-hmm. where you're like, add 10 to the thing of my cursor's on and record that as part of a macro but that was that's pretty slick what you just did yeah i dig it so the cool thing about this is if um now we actually did this backwards so out of curiosity i wonder if we could go like 90 and then negative 10 yeah of course we can Duh. um so if if uh you were hitting the situation where like 80 wasn't dark enough but 90 mm-hmm. was too dark well now you actually have the ability to drop in an 85 if you wanted to without messing with the defaults right yeah i like that and then you could kind of just pick something in the color picker that was in between those and grab that value Mm -hmm. so the idea is kind of like i'm building up a design system in this file right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's like don't so i was trying to basically and it sort of already provides kind of a design system where it's like we pick some good grays and we pick some good reds and so and like good uh font weights and things that are like margin things and whatnot so i basically try to not do anything new and just work with what was what was there and there were a couple times i was like ah i might want this like a little bit lighter or darker or bigger or whatever totally and i would mostly just kind of ignore that and assume like okay they picked good things that relate to each other well i'm gonna kind of just just work with what i have for now yeah and that's the goal but of course it's mm-hmm. a it's a work in progress and as people use it on more and more real world uh sites it's uh, always good to get feedback on where people hit mm-hmm. issues where it's like because I've run into the same issues, right? In the original, mm-hmm. well, original, I mean, a couple versions ago, I think margins only went up to eight and we didn't have mm-hmm. five even. And a lot of that was because we wanted to, we didn't want the the file size of the sort of CDN builds to be really, really big because yeah. um, every time you add one of these, that's actually like, that's the all sides margin class, the vertical margin, the horizontal margin, and then all the individual Mm -hmm. sides. So that's seven classes added just by adding this. Multiply that by how many screen sizes you have. So five screen sizes. So now you have Mm. 35 new classes added every time you add a single entry here, right? And it's even worse for things like background colors that also have focus and hover variants and stuff like that. It's a combinatorial explosion. Um, Mm -hmm. So you have to be like kind of careful there. Um, And for the longest time I was pretty worried about the people kind of like perceiving it as a really bloated CSS framework and just kind of shrugging it off because of that, even though 
you have total control over the file size uh, because it's up to you what scales you want included, what variants you want, how many screen sizes, all that stuff. But I wanted the mm-hmm. default build to be kind of reasonable. So that's totally. still somewhat of a concern, but I'm, I've loosened up on it quite a bit. Um, so even if it's like 60 kilobytes or something as the default build, I would be happy with that. Whereas originally we were trying to keep it at like 20. Gotcha. So <laughs> yeah, originally we had way fewer of these. We've added more. Um, I think a, a breaking change that will happen in the default config before 1.0 will probably be switching to a numeric color scale so we can add some more colors and also make it easier for people to drop values in between and stuff. Makes um, sense. But yeah. I, had, I had one other thing that I ran into a couple times and I can actually see it on this list is like there is a three, there is a five, there is no seven. Surprise. Yeah. And so it's just like I would try to apply it. I would just guess like is there a thing like there's almost always the even variance and then sometimes there's odd variance. And that really is just about the same conversation we were having with the max width stuff where at the smaller end of the scale, Mm -hmm. it's, it's useful to have the really tight ones, but these are all proportional values. So one in like tailwind units is always a quarter rem, which is four pixels. Um, so there's, there's always a relationship between this value and this value, right? This is like a quarter of this which you can see see. even all the way up to here. So this divided by four is always going to be um, what this is. Got it. Uh, Okay. So for the numeric scales, everything is done like that. And that's why some of them are just missing. Does that show up in the docs, by the way? It doesn't. So we should probably point that out. Yeah. Um, But I think the spacing docs in general are just not done. But yeah, that would be a good thing to include. I mean, and then other things, we use like a different scale, right? So um, for like the max widths, for example... We use this scale where, uh, you know, it's just like a descriptive scale again. And Mm -hmm. the the goal of this scale is really to solve the problem that you were talking about with the other scale where you aren't 100% sure what the next value is that's available. Whereas here you always know, right? There's Mm -hmm. never going to be an MD in an XL without an LG. So as long as you kind of know this sort of t-shirt size, how that even works, (laughs) then... Uh, yeah. you, you know, it's always going to be there until you hit the top end sort of thing. Yep. And that's the Makes same sense. for font sizes and stuff too. We took this approach, but for the things where you just need to have a lot of values, it seemed impractical to use this approach, uh, especially because mm-hmm. here it can be useful sometimes to think like, you know what? I'd like to have like double the padding that I currently have. So instead of four, maybe I'll switch to eight. And I know that is going to be double because it's all proportional. Right. Like so that. it's, it's a balancing act for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So while we're on this topic of, of REMS and such, I, I originally, when I was working on this design, I had a larger like base body font size. So I think, I believe it's just one, it's just 16 pixels now, which is like the default of one REM. Yeah. Um, but there was a period, there's a time where I was doing like, I don't know, 18 or something. Um, and I was curious what, so like, I was like, okay, if I do want to do a larger body copy size then i probably want bigger headings and bigger line heights and all the stuff and there's basically like a lot of changes i want to flow out of yeah um that change do you have recommendations on how to achieve that kind of thing yeah so with certain things that you'll just kind of get it for free so like line height is always just defined as a relative um unit right so i think our default line height is 1.5 for letting normal or whatever that class Mm -hmm. is so that's Mm -hmm. it's not like in any units it's just going to be based on the font size um for headings if you wanted headings to scale proportionately with the text size you have to define things a bit differently that said my experience is that although that sounds like a good idea in (laughs) theory it ends up not being like that great of an idea in practice. Cause what I find is that as screen sizes get bigger, you can get away with like more dramatic shifts in font size. Um, if that makes sense. So I might hmm. be wrong here, but say we were looking to look at medium, for example, and you wanted to look at like this heading. So this heading has like a rendered font size of 42 pixels and their body copy, I think is what do we got? 21. So 42 and 21. So mm-hmm. you might think this is always double the size of this, right? But when mm-hmm. you get down to like a small screen, like this size, now maybe I'm wrong and maybe it still is, but this is mm-hmm. 18 and this is 34, not 36. 
Hmm. So it's a little bit subtle in this case, but I do find this tends to be the case where I actually want everything to be a little tighter together on smaller screens than I do on bigger screens because if you use a, a larger font size here, um, you're going to get like weird wrapping that's not going to be as nice um, mm-hmm. because of just the limitations of the screen size. So I don't find that you always want your fonts to actually be like perfectly proportional. It's really mm. like more, it's it's more complicated, you know? So right. here you could make this even bigger and it would still look good. But then preserving that proportion at smaller screen sizes would look even worse than it would have had we done it with the current system, right? Mm-hmm. So the way that I tend to do that with Tailwind is uh, just by relying on sort of our built-in text sizes and just sort of changing which one I'm using at different screen sizes. So maybe like my headings, if we're following like medium system, right? Maybe it's 3XL for an H1 on small screen sizes. But when I bump up to a larger screen size, I bump that up to 4XL, even though I might've only bumped up the body copy from base to LG or something, okay. uh, which is only a two pixel jump and this is a six pixel jump, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, but with okay. the base font size thing, I do make those changes sometimes uh, too. And the way I tend to do that nowadays, I used to do it by having like an actual definition for the HTML tag and putting some stuff in there. But mm-hmm. what I found is you can also just do this. You can just add a class to the HTML tag and just say, by default, I want to use a small text size. So I want the root font size to be 14 pixels. But then mm-hmm. on screens bigger than that, then I want to jump back up to 16. Uh, um, so now on this page, everything is exactly the same as it was. But once we get under a certain size, you know, everything should, in theory, yeah, it jumps yeah. right here, right? Everything gets a little bit smaller. And everything stays relative because everything everything in Tailwind is defined in REMS if we can help it. So you can see mm-hmm. even your header gets shorter um, uh, to yeah. stay kind of proportional, right? So you can get... Cool. So that's kind of like one way to do it. The other way is to just in, you know, whatever your CSS file is. I don't know how, which one you're... Is it this one? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so I might have a custom style here that was like font size, 14 pixels, and then using... Tailwind, you can do like at screen SM, which is a shortcut for a more verbose media query otherwise, um, and do that. This is the same as if you had you know, media min width 576 pixels in this case, or you could use config screens.sm. Oh, cool. The, from the config file. Now, why did you throw this between preflight and components? So because this is like a custom base style, and mm-hmm. pre-flight is all the base styles. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense to go here. Now, and it doesn't really matter in this case because you're probably just not going to define the HTML thing anywhere else, but the declaration order is important in CSS, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so stuff that's defined later that has the same specificity as stuff that's defined earlier will override that. So mm-hmm. I try to like organize it in that sort of way. Like if I ever wanted something like in this case, it's the HTML tag, so it doesn't really matter, but say you were trying to add like a default button style or something, mm-hmm. um, you would want like your custom button classes to be able to override that. So you'd want to make sure that this came before your button classes. So I think of my style sheets as just organized into three sections, which is like base styles for the whole site, which is usually just touching root elements and kind of normalizing things or, making a couple of sensible defaults and then component mm-hmm. classes, which are more complex classes that have multiple selectors in them or sorry, multiple properties like a button or something. And then I mm-hmm. always put the utilities after that. So if I just wanted to override the font size on a button, I could have the button class and the font size override and not worry about having to do like important or any of that stuff. Oh, um, I see. And what's the difference between components and utilities in Tailwind? So a component, our, what we think of as a component class is sort of classes that you would build using at apply in generally. Um, so stuff that you've extracted common utility patterns and you want to wrap that up into an abstraction mm-hmm. that you can reuse, we think of those as like component classes generally. Anything okay. that you that is there is like a convenience, so you have like one place to make changes to all instances, but you still would want to override with utilities in certain cases when you wanted to make like a more specific version. Um, so things like buttons or cards or 
form inputs, um, anything usually that has more than just like one declaration in it. So a button is going to have, you know, padding, it's going to have font, or it's going to have color, you know, it's going to have weight, it's going to have a background color. Um, so this is... And that makes of, it a utility? This makes it a component. A component still, okay. In kind of our terminology anyways, because yep. you would you would end up building this by... Comp- like uh, composing it out of utilities, right? So you'd probably do like PX4, PY2, text white, font, semi-bold, BG, blue, um, you know, border, blue, Mm -hmm. dark. Mm -hmm. Um, But then in your actual HTML, you could always do something like button classes button, but for this button, we actually want to have, I don't know. In this case, you would have like text base says like the base font size. But we actually want sure. to have like larger text for whatever reason. I mean, mm-hmm. this way the utilities will still take precedence over kind of like the got it stuff that was defined here. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, there's a cascade going on. Exactly. Uh, give me one second here. Yeah. Noisy stuff in the office. Don't need that for. Yeah. I, I snuck away to close a window earlier. Yeah. But I did it stealthy. I don't think you noticed. No, I didn't. So I was just talking to nobody. Yeah. Well, I could hear you because I got remote headphones or wireless <laughs> headphones. Cool. Yeah. So, um, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about, like before we get into trying to make those uh, changes? That was my. Okay. Those are my questions. Okay. That cool. I had ahead of time. All right. So. I mean, we have, we've done the work to sort of center this and make it a little bit narrower, but if we wanted to change the default text color, then probably the way that I would do that is um, using your kind of like content override classes here. Mm-hmm. So here's actually a good example of where you have base styles that I would probably move, by the okay. way. So since these are just like styling a raw link tag, mm-hmm. I would move those up here because that's kind of like your sensible default for links, Got right? It. And then if you wanted to, um, say you wanted like link tags that were inside Markdown to look different. Now mm. it wouldn't actually matter in this case because the specificity would override it. Right. Um, but I still think it's useful to keep things kind of sorted in order of how you would yeah. want the overrides to apply. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so sense. here we could do something like content and we could apply text gray darkest. And these dots, these leading dots are optional, by the way. Um, oh, nice. I also didn't re- realize you could apply multiple things simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. On one and, line. And the reason for that is so that you can just like go here and just like copy this. <laughs> and then mm. just go here and then like just that. say, add apply. Okay, we're done. Um, yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah, so I guess we should it's probably... It's like you thought about this. I try to think. I try to think once in a while. <laughs> So let's, uh, I think you set up a watcher for this to get yep. CSS watch, changes to get caught, right? Yep. So in theory. <laughs> that is the theory. In theory, that's a little bit lighter now. Okay, so um, here you're you're saying like all headings should kind of be, have the tighter line height, right? So I might just like collapse these definitions. Sure. Um, they used to have more differences, but then they, now it. they don't. And since we probably want these ones to be dark too, we might as well throw that in while we're at right. it. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll just clean up all these dots to be consistent. Mm-hmm. I originally only added support for putting the dot there because the syntax highlighting looked nicer. <laughs> 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 because it's like made up syntax anyways, right? So you just kind of yeah. have to hope like, what is my editor going to do with this? Who knows? Um, right. Yeah, so there we got that. And then we wanted to do uh, some margin stuff on those. So in that case, that's probably just going to be on the H2s. So we can do apply MT. Uh, what do we do? Like 2.5, I think we said. So MT10. Mm-hmm. And then probably like an MB6 or, f- or 4 or something. Just kind of see what we get. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's looking okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I totally uh, feel what you're saying about like making the heading part of the next section and clear that it's not. Yeah, the so there's section. no like ambiguity. Um, yep, I dig that. 
Now up here too, I kind of think like this spacing is maybe a little bit too tight now that we've kind of got this more liberal spacing above those headings. And I something I often do with design too is because I'm like a analytically brained like developer who's like just trying to get good at design because I want to feel like I have the skills to make my own stuff. A lot mm -hmm. of what I'm doing is like looking for precedent in places and seeing like, mm. what did other people do? Like if I think this is too tight, before I add the spacing, a lot of the time what I'm going to do is like look at other sites with well-designed articles and see like, mm -hmm. did they have spacing at the top? And then it sort of trains me to like know what instincts I have that are good and which ones are, are not. Totally, you know what I mean? totally. So again, yeah, like I would that. probably maybe go look at medium and see like, okay, there is a uh, little bit of space here. Maybe not as much as I was expecting. I might go look at like mm. Derek's uh, blog or his level journal because subtle is mm -hmm. kind of like a nicely designed blog too totally. and here like this is tight but i think it's a it's kind of just tight because it's kind of like an eyebrow treatment for this and mm. because it's like a really soft color unless you mouse over it it doesn't really like compete with it too much right but here this is like pretty pretty bold right right so i might yeah, yeah. try like um now where's your border coming from here so yeah maybe the easiest way to do that would just be to slam like some extra margin under it here Yep. And like that already, I think that looks a little bit better. I agree. Now it harmonizes with the H2s. Yeah. I also I'm, like your positive take or positive spin on uh, looking at other people's things for inspiration. I have, I still like, I have like a little bit of guilt where I'm like, like our sidebar is like uh, the Tailwind Docs sidebar ripped off more or less. Every sidebar looks like, like this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I was like, I feel kind of bad that I'm doing this, but it seems okay. As long I like to just think, I want to do this for my own reasons without stealing it from somewhere. Now mm -hmm. let's verify that a talented designer has made this same decision somewhere else <laughs> so that <laughs> sure. I can feel like it's a good decision. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, I mean, this looks cool. Another thing that you could try, like this border is kind of just here because without it, this kind of looks pretty plain, right? I'm guessing yeah. it's kind of like the jam. Yeah. So, I actually, that actually happened by accident. I was trying to do a different thing and it's like, Oh, that actually looks kind of cool. And I left it. Yeah. So something else that I have seen, that I kind of like is using just like a short border as sort of like a little underlined accent color mm. underneath the, the heading. Mm -hmm. But we'd have to do things a little bit differently to make that work, I think. Because we can't really easily add this underneath this title if this title is like coming from the markdown. So mm -hmm. if we want to like experiment with that, uh, we could check out like this post or where is this page demo? Uh, it's demo.html uh, in the root or demo.md. Got it. Okay. So what I would probably do, I think is slam this in here as the title instead. Is this here? Is this an important decision that was made or is this just whatever? Uh, you can change anything on here. Or is this the title for up here? That is the title of the, yeah. Of and the like page. The, the HTML title. Got it. So what would I do? If you want it to have like a, I mean, you could call it like page title. Maybe we call this like article title or something. Not clear what you're doing yet. Uh, I want to be able to keep your title in the top here, but also have a reference to this so we can delete it from here and use like Jekyll's variables to spit uh, out the, the title smart. of the like blog post while still keeping this little underline as part of like the layout file instead of trying to embed it into the markdown. Although like there's nothing stopping us from doing that to first try it out anyways, right? Like there's no reason we can't throw some HTML here. Oh, um, interesting. You can't just do what I have been doing for like changing the letting on the um, H1s and H2s. Uh, what do you mean? Like this sort of thing? Uh, yeah, we can't throw stuff in there for to make this work we can't throw stuff in there to add this like extra div that has like extra div right because you can't put a border underneath an h1 that's not a thing well you can but what i was thinking okay. in this case actually is that we would we would do this as like a um like with like a fixed width of some kind you know what i mean and mm. okay. give it like a m like my8 or something i don't know and then maybe above this content area. Now, I don't think you need this div. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could just add like a 
probably just slam the vertical padding on that a little bit. And then maybe this thing, instead of MY8, maybe it's like MT6 and MB8 or something. So it's a little bit closer to like the title or something. I don't know. Like this is just another treatment I've seen that I always thought was like kind of slick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I kind of dig that. You get the color, but it's uh, not like the full on like border just kind of hanging out in space. So it's sure. just like another another idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, other than that, I think a lot of this is just going to come down to it will look better with real words. Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm also, I imagine I'll bump into other things where it's like, I want to throw a pull quote from a blog post and link to it. And so totally. I'll have to end up styling stuff, but I, I don't know what that is yet. Mm-hmm. Actually, so do you, like, I just threw kind of garbage text in here to style some stuff. Do you think it would have been better to write a, like, full article and then style that and, like, work with real content? I think so, probably, but I will admit to not always doing that myself either. Gotcha, um, yeah. But I think, in general, I've always liked that advice of design in a text editor first, you know what I mean? Because most of the mm -hmm. stuff that you're doing on the web is words. So it's better to write everything that you want to write and say everything that you want to say and then figure out how can you present that in a way that, that looks good. In this case, it's like, it's not going to be like every article has custom styling or anything. So as long as you can simulate kind of a realistic looking set of, you know, how long would sections of an article be or how often would I have, you know, single sentence paragraphs versus, right. you know then I think it's still pretty fine, but yeah. So um, is there any stuff that you wanted to look at like regarding um, implementation yeah, I guess the one of the thing was pieces? handling the responsive stuff. Okay. Just like, so I have it basically working how I wanted it to, but I'm open to feedback. Okay. So is there anything that isn't working how you wanted it to? Um. At, well, at first there was before I realized you need that um, meta viewport thing. Oh, yeah. That's that was something that we should add to the Tailwind docs. I keep meaning to do that actually is like uh, give people like a starter HTML yeah. um, cool. thing to paste in. Because what I do is I go and grab the one from Bootstrap. So, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I was I was so confused. Like I was the text was so tiny on my phone and I was like, what is going on? Uh, okay. Yeah, because what it's doing is just trying to zoom out to show like the whole thing at whatever exactly. it thinks the width is supposed to be or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so I haven't implemented, we have a little hamburger that shows up once you get small enough, but I haven't actually added the JavaScript to like pop open the nav. Yeah, that's always a fun, a fun one for sure. Yeah. Um, one thing that I'm doing, like, one thing I like sort of felt unsure about is when I, once I reach a certain width, I drop the title. Yeah, like I removed the title, which I don't honestly love. Like I wish the title could stay there. Um, but when you get down to like three twenty, is always the the really worst size that I always test because that's like iPhone five, iPhone SE size. Yeah. Yep. Which is not as many of those floating around these days as there used to be, but that's still my favorite mm -hmm. iPhone size. So I want it to look good on the phone <laughs> that I wish Apple made. I um, like that. But yeah, you're right. You couldn't really, you couldn't really get it in there. Well, I mean. I, I could, but it would be real small, and I feel like it would look kind of weird. It's here, right? So if we were to just drop this hidden class, I mean, actually, that does work. Hmm. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, this, uh, yeah, I used this. This text used to be larger, so maybe it, it just fits now. Yeah, and yeah, because we did add that little tweak, right, to make the font size smaller too. Um. Oh yeah, we kind of just oh, yeah, put yeah, that in. So that's just to demonstrate it, but we didn't actually. Uh, <laughs> Do you think that should stick around? Like, is that a good overall change? You think? I like it personally because if you look here now, your your body text is fourteen pixels, and it's already like wrapping almost too often. You know what I mean? Like, this mm -hmm. is like almost like a newspaper article yeah. split into a bunch of narrow columns. If if you were to bump this font size up to like sixteen, 
then like it's just gonna wrap even more often and like this is hard to read in my opinion you got like six words per line sometimes like that kind of sucks whereas to me yeah. this is kind of right at that threshold where i don't think i would want it to be narrower than that anyways mm-hmm. um on some sites i've even gone like as small as like 12 pixels but you don't want to get too carried away because people are yeah. looking at this on small devices already anyway. So you kind of have to find a balance. Yeah. There's, there's that interest. There's this kind of like surprising thing where it's like, yes, the screen size is smaller, but you can get away with a smaller font because they're holding it closer, closer to their face. To face. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And another thing could be like the font choice too. Like some fonts are just going to be more legible at smaller sizes. Right. So I'm guessing this mm-hmm. is probably like whatever our default sans serif is that we shipped with. Um, mm-hmm. But looking at it with like San Francisco, like maybe that's actually easier to read at 12 pixels than the serif is. Mm, um, interesting. So yeah, even just deciding what font to use is, is tricky. Uh, yeah. Like a serif is I, nice, but I've actually been trending towards liking sans serifs for like technical-ish stuff, even though yeah. it's really just going to be words. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, if you look at like Derek's thing, this is a Proxima Nova, I think, which is like a sans serif. Even like the Thoughtbot blog was always one that I always used to look at because it was always like a nicely designed one. And you're using sans serif here too. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. So I could be convinced. I started with 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 sans. So I think if you were to use a sans serif, you'd want to pick something that's like a got a little bit more personality than the system font system font is good for like user interface elements but i don't mm-hmm. think i love it for like paragraph content so would you go with something that's like oh a web font that you have to go download and all that nonsense um i mean it kind of rubs me the wrong way and like from a performance point of yeah, view like that like it flash. is a, it is kind of a bummer but yeah almost every site you visit on the internet is doing it so um, and a lot of it's going to be cached if, if people are pulling them from the same sources. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is web fonts are still like not the, not a totally solved thing. Um, mm-hmm. this little would you hamburger, use like a, mm, sorry, a Google web font or something like that. Uh, I would, I would use a, maybe a Google font. I would see if there was one that I liked because the nice thing about Google fonts is it's more likely to be cached than just about any other font mm-hmm. service. Um, but if not, I would use like type kit and pay for it or fonts.com and pay for it. If I am using Google fonts, the first thing I always do is I like uncheck everything I don't want to see. I sort it by popular and I set a number of styles to like at least 10. So I know that they have a bunch of different weights and stuff. And this is kind of my view for like fonts that are probably good choices because a lot of people are using them and a lot of those people are probably better at picking fonts than me. <laughs> um, but I've never... Unless you keep going with the uh, like Cargill cult approach. Yes, always. <laughs> uh, which I think is why I like pair programming because I like reassurance yeah. on decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't like to yeah. just like make a decision for myself and stick with it. <laughs> uh, Leto is like a nice one that I've used. Uh, Open Sans is a good one. It's funny. I have like distinct memories of sites that I use as like... Interesting. Um, as a you know, like proof that this is a good font to use on a blog. Yeah, and if I'm I not mistaken, that, like uh-huh. Yehuda Katz's blog, uh, which I haven't looked at in a long time, and maybe he's changed it, but he was using Open Sans for, mm. oh, maybe he's just using mm. it for headings. Yep, Open Sans for headings. And what's he using for body copy? Noto Serif. So, mm. um, but yeah, Leto is a nice font. Roboto is pretty watched, nice, but it's kind of kind of condensed compared to some other fonts. So small sizes, it's harder to read. Yeah, I was watching your uh, rebuilding Netlify with mm-hmm. Tailman thing, and there was they were using a uh, Roboto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people like Railway. Okay. Steve hates Railway for some reason. I think he hates the <laughs> W. Mm. It's it's kind of pretentious. It's a little much, yeah. But yeah. Cool. Um, All right. So I'll play around with some of those and see what I think. Cool. If you wanted to keep oh. this around, we could just like go and get rid of this hidden thing. Um, one thing yeah. that I think I noticed in my brief, uh, just looking at the dev tools is you're using like a fixed height for this header, mm-hmm. which um, I think is fine. But what I usually try to do is make it like, 
kind of just based on the content plus whatever amount of padding that I want to have around that content. Mm. So like here you have like PT2, which is just going to push the content down. Uh Um, But I think like if it was me, I would probably... So I would have no height to start probably and I would just look at it and see like, okay, so it's, it's display flex so we can center everything. Um, if we want to have like a, a padding of say like two on everything, you know, that's going to be centered, but now it kind of looks like way bigger than it should be. Right. So, mm. uh, uh, you know what? Uh, some of the problem is like your logo is big. Yeah. Like that. The image is not cropped very tightly. Right. So, yep. But you know what you could do also is you could just add that padding on like the areas where you want it so this div we could say like we always want this to have at least a padding of this which it might end up with more it might end up with less like depending on what drives that padding elsewhere in this line and then same thing for where you have the the hamburger thing right so i might just do like the same thing there like a py2 and now that's a weird one because there must be some other display thing going on here oh uh is there still padding on like the container why is this not just full height there's a height set on it oh yeah this took a lot of fiddling for me so this is pretty suboptimal gotcha I'm sure. gotcha gotcha okay so i would put the height on the svg huh, um, okay Okay, and now, so we've got padding on this element, but it's not, oh, because you've got position absolute on it, which I don't think is really necessary, because we can do. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is, actually, this is a question I meant to ask. Mm-hmm. It's like I wanted my logo and the title shoved to the left, and this one all the way to the right. Got it. So the flexbox trick for this one is so this is align items which kind of controls where things are vertically justify mm-hmm. content controls like how things are distributed horizontally mm-hmm. so by default everything is packed to the left but you can go justify end and everything is going to be on the right right uh, you can say justify spaced and everything is going to have an equal amount of space around it uh no wait justify Around between or around yeah. around puts equal space around everything, and mm-hmm. then between puts equal space between everything. Now this gets centered, right? So the trick there now is to basically take this pairing thoughtfully thing and say we actually want that to be part of this div. Uh, so now you just have like a left half and a right half for the whole nav, mm-hmm. and then this is going to need to be flex as well. And you probably want some margin on the actually you might not need any margin on the image so then the other thing here is i noticed that you have like some rando margins on like these pieces <laughs> yeah so i would probably trash those entirely and try to do that by adding horizontal padding to the to the header right so now that things are too far left and right i didn't really can you say that again i didn't really follow that bit uh this part like where we deleted this stuff yeah so right now basically your header is full width right if you think about Mm -hmm. like the actual content area of the header um Mm -hmm. so you've got like this piece and this piece and this has margin left pushing it from the side and this has margin Mm -hmm. right pushing it from the side um Mm -hmm. so it doesn't actually make a difference right in terms of how it's going to look but from like a mental model sort of approach I sort of don't see this as like margin right next to this and margin left next to this. I sort of see it as you're trying to define there being a content area where stuff goes inside Mm. of it. And there's Mm -hmm. some padding on the right and left of that content area. So those just get defined in one place instead of having to duplicate the values on the left and right and trying to match them up. You know what I mean? So you're going to throw another basically a div around everything inside the header. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so can. what I would do is I would throw another div. I would basically we want to duplicate this header for a second because some of the classes have to stay on the outer div and some of them have to move to the inner div. Mm. Um, so flex is going to stay on the inner one. 
Uh, BG White, Border B, Shadow, Border Gray, Lighter, Fixed, Pin T, Pin X, Z50, and we'll keep relative on this one because you might want to do, you w might want to make your drop down relative to this, although you might need to move that. It, it, that's kind of just depending on what you actually want to work like. But basically, all the flex stuff needs to stay here, and then everything about like how the whole whole full bar should look stays on the other one mm. and okay so now what did we mess up did you add the margin to the new div i haven't done the margin yet but i'm seeing another problem which is like see how oh. everything jumped up oh yeah so i'm trying to think what change we would have made that caused that to happen is it because we lost no. Position fixed. That's bizarre. I'm trying to understand why like this is being placed underneath this. Oh, you know what it is? Is you have position fixed and position relative on it at the same time. Huh. So you obviously <laughs> is only that want not correct. <laughs> you only want one of those. Yeah. Uh, which in this case is probably relative um, okay. so and since it's not going to be fixed then you might not need these so let's just see what happens like you might not even need this either mm. it, like did you want that to like stay as you scrolled or no, did you want to go no. away want to go away got it okay so now on this element here is where we would add like PX8 or something. And everything will kind of jump in. Cool. And now things are not centered like I yeah. kind of thought they would be. And I think that must be because of... Okay, yeah, because this um, is being given full height, which is actually surprising might be because this is so big mm. and this has margin bottom on it that's part of it mm. okay so let's see where that gets us so that's looking centered ish now mm -hmm. yeah so that is centered now and this is cool. centered relative to that now this thing on the right doesn't seem centered so let's see if we can figure out why that would be so it's because the um, I think it might be because SVG by default has an inline block or an inline style. Yeah. Or sorry, an inline display, which means line height was affecting the SVG, which is making it taller than it actually should have been. Oh, interesting. Uh, so now though, everything like looks pretty centered. Yeah. And now this sucks. <laughs> so we lost our shadow so yeah. we can fix that by bringing the Z50 back actually no we need this to be relative and this might actually might just fix it on its own sometimes but it didn't so that means that there's a Z index to find somewhere else too so there there is yeah um, so but I might not need that either now the only thing that's a little funky is you can see this P is yep. farther left than the logo. Yeah. That was bothering me too. So you might just need to get a more tightly cropped yep. version of uh, the logo. Okay. Or alternatively, you could make the padding on this like narrower less so that at least this pokes out farther than the P, which mm. I think I mm -hmm. would be okay with that too. You sure. know what I mean? As long as this is never farther left than the logo, then I think it's kind of kind of cool. That's interesting. Yeah, I agree. Because then it, it kind of feels like this is like a full width header and this is still like a centered content area or something, you know? I like um, it. Yeah, Should so, we go find a blog that does this though to make sure we're, <laughs> we have good taste? So let me think if I have like precedent. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I probably do. <laughs> um, cool. I can no, definitely I like think of sites that do like the full width header but don't do 
full width content area. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. cool man. So cool. There's a handful of changes that I think are uh, little improvements. I think the code at least is more like how I would have structured that header. Yeah, um, that was really helpful. That I struggle with the header a lot. Yeah, it's gonna get worse when you have to do the menu. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it depends what you want to do with the menu. Like I usually just do uh, like click it and it just shows up underneath and kind of takes up the whole page. Some people like to do fancy things to slide in from the side and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. That's tricky for sure. I Especially, probably will do the simplest thing. Yeah. Yeah, so you can my copy CSS what Tailwind knowledge. does on our docs, maybe. <laughs> that's what yeah, we're I'm just going to get inspired by what Tailwind does. Yeah, yeah. well, just just verify that Tailwind verify. does it the same way that you would have done it anyways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Awesome, dude. This is so helpful. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, anything else that you want to look at? or? Um, I think that's, that's this, this is great for now. Sweet. Cool. I'm going to have you actually maybe... Uh, do a PR or something against this because I, I want to just pull these changes in. Yeah. Why don't we uh, make some changes there? GCB, sure. Adam's tweaks. And uh, it's a big commit. So oh, that's all right. <sighs> I, 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 we paired on it so it can be big. Yeah. Uh, so what should we call it? Improve some design stuff. And CSS stuff. Get our hub fork. Get upload branch. No. <laughs> Get push dash u. Adam Wathen. Adam's tweaks. Is that right? Seems right. Looks like it. Hub pull request. Mm hmm. That'll pull against your... Oh, no, it's not. Oh, cool. You did it right. The hub, the, dude, the hub tool is so good. Yeah, the best. So this is my fork. Pull request. There it is. Awesome, dude. Thanks so much. No problem. Shall we wrap it up? I think so. Tuple, oh, so per- this... Tuple performed very well, by the way. Uh, I'm psyched. Yeah, I mean... Uh, uh, not that you did any typing or clicking around. I didn't around, do anything, but, but I moused a little bit. It was certain, um, How was the uh, experience on your end? Uh, it was good on my end. Uh, All the way from like a Canada. Bit of, yeah. Um, latency was pretty much okay. Um, like pretty much fine. I was never like, felt like <clears throat> what you were saying was out of sync with what I was seeing. We have a couple like visual artifacts on my side that we're, we're working to get rid of where it's just like the screen mm. gets a little confused sometimes. Sure. Uh, but overall, like it was totally doable. Audio was really good too. There wasn't like a single audio starter the entire time. Awesome, that's great. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you sounded good to me too. Amazing. So yeah, um, this site is going to go. It's probably going to be at tuple.app slash pairing dash thoughtfully or something like that. Yeah. Um, it'd be good when we post this video to have a link to like a, a resting place for this site if people want to go check it out. Yep. But also that repo is public if people want to take a look at it. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. And uh, this is the first thing I built with Tailwind for real, and it was great. So people that haven't checked out Tailwind totally should. Nice. I'm glad it was fun. Yeah. And it's helpful to be able to get one of the creators to uh, review your code. Yeah, definitely. Shocker. <laughs> cool, cool, man. All right. All right. Well, good chatting, and uh, we should do this again sometime. Sounds great. I love Parent. I'm always into it.